Hey guys. So I grabbed Emma's freebie from the group. As soon as I saw it, I knew what I was going to do with it because I've been thinking about a postcard project just before she posted the freebie. So what a great coincidence. I've actually got some old postcards that I think I bought off an eBay auction really, really cheap. And some are very, very pretty, but the majority are pretty ugly. However, they do have beautiful original handwriting addresses stamps. So what I would like to do is make this rather ugly postcard, which wouldn't really fit with any junk journals I do. They might fit with yours and that's fine. And create a new cover for the postcard so we keep the back because the back's cool. I'm going to cover this with some Fabri-Tac glue, which I find the strongest, and also this has a slightly finer nozzle, saves a bit of mess. Pop this sheet onto it, smooth it all out, cut it up, and come back to you with the next stage, the decorating stage. I've been in my scrap box. I have this from a previous project, just a little strip of paper. If I'm breaking up a piece, then I will go for thirds rather than half. I've managed not to put that on straight. Let me just play with that. I don't think it's cut very straight either, mind. Yeah, nothing's cut very straight, so we're going to go with that. I have this woman that I've cut out, can't remember where from, ages ago. I am debating whether to leave her with a white edge or just ink very, very gently to give her a bit of a black outline black then white then her and I'm hoping that will help pop her off the page a little bit so that she does become the focal point but I don't want to cover up all the white which is quite a task. I don't know if that made a huge difference or not. The last thing I want is either a word or a number to finish it off and I would be putting that in this bottom corner here. I have tickets. It would have to be horizontal. It's too big. I wonder if you could get away with that or whether it's too clashy. Uh, I don't know that it is actually. Stands out. I think you'd want to, where would you want to put it? There? I think there. Of course I can't put that on straight either. My inability to put anything straight on anything is quite something. Doesn't matter because I will add some ink stamping. To ink stamp I want a slightly softer surface, not much, just a little bit. We'll go with a circular postage mark first. I will try, even though it ha has actually got black on it, doing that in a Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. It's very faint, but I suppose faint's good. Is faint good or should it be more dramatic? Hmm. Let's try one, a different one, in a different colour. I'm going to go in, in basically the same place. Yeah, actually, if you do it twice, you know how the post office is, the postmarks are never clean, so that actually is beginning to look more like you would get from a postal franking system anyway. I do have some little zigzags and a stamp, slightly off. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that didn't really come out, so I'll do it there. There we go. The other thing would be to distress the edges. I am going to use the vintage photo for that. I don't go for small edges when I edge things, you know, I'll go right in there. So that looks quite nice. Now the back, even though it is stained because it is old, it's not stained with this colour. And there we go, we have a genuine piece of ephemera which I hopefully have now converted to something quite useful for one of my junk journals. A little something I like to do because I think it looks neat is to take a picture and add a frame around it, but 
like the picture is falling out of the frame and then behind that put a backing paper and then we need to get it all to fit so it's like the picture has slipped in the frame I like having things at angles rather than so you could have both of those at an angle and then that one's straight I hadn't read the back of the postcard until I started to do this and you'll never believe what the back of the postcard says let me read it to you because it's quite funny considering I have just covered everything up it says dear May this lake is near Fred's place <laughs> what lake <laughs> brilliant well done I'm so good at this I don't know if you need a third piece down here or not I'm just going to test a few little things it might be okay with two as I said I prefer odd numbers so I would prefer three I do still have actually quite a bit of red stuff here and it's not clashing as badly as I thought it might so I've got pretend buttons which I don't think will go we have a oh it says 1982 that's obviously not 1982 we could have done with older dates now does that work or do you not need it let me look at both with without I think they're both equally valid to be fair I might do it with as though it's attached to the painting that's just my obsession with odd numbers there right that's a second very very simple collage that has completely changed these rather boring postcards I have another stash builder idea for you from Roxy Creations 100 day project and it's this journaling page and the way we make it is so that you have a digital download or some attractive paper and you hinge an envelope to it and this would actually be where it gets sewn in to your signature but at the moment we're just making them I've chosen to use new envelopes, but ones that were part of card making kits. So probably 20 years old. I can't remember exactly what Roxy did. I know that she left this blank so that it was a good journaling spot. And I probably will do that even though this hasn't been coffee stained or anything. I might do a little bit of decoration, but nothing fantastic, nothing major. But the main thing is that once we've made up say 10 of these we're going to decorate both sides of the envelope let's make these up I have no doubt when I made this prototype I had to recut the paper because I can't seem to cut a straight edge and measure properly to save my life so I've no doubt I will have to do that again but I will show you they're really simple to put together so you take one piece of decorative paper and you fold it in thirds but they're not equal thirds the, you're going to have a big a big bit and I'm using this just to see if I can get it to vaguely line up along a line but if I do that what seems to happen is the rest isn't then lined up you see that it's sort of slanty there which would say that it's not a hundred percent straight so if I put this along the line and then what I've been doing is cutting these edges straight so let's do it that way because I can see what I'm doing then because I'm doing this at a distance so it hits the camera and then what I'm going to do is score a line just over that edge so that there's a bit of a gap this side on the next fold Finding these envelopes, for example, this one has been cut to be a side pocket, which means you can bring that down and it's not going to restrict what you can put in. First thing I'm going to do is put a notch in around halfway. I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to try and eyeball it. I'm going to glue along this edge so that it will go on there just a bit shy of that score line and now you have your envelope pocket attached 
you can either leave it like that and maybe decorate this bit or you can do what Roxy seemed to do on most of hers I think which is line up along there and cut down to where the envelope is folded that down and glued it and that shouldn't restrict that too much that should still be a decent ish pocket you'll find that that looks a little odd so I cut that bit away that is the basic template now all the hinge pages and envelopes are done what I'm going to do is treat each envelope like it's a mini masterboard on both sides <laughs> I've put a little bit of greaseproof kitchen paper in here just so that I don't get glue all over this, the closure for the envelope I'll get rid of that I'm going to be taking bits of scrap paper or anything else that's in the scrap box and popping them down to cover this envelope I may well do a piece of joining washi down that bit using the Mod Podge but you can use any glue if you don't want it to wrinkle up too much I would suggest using a strong glue just around the edges rather than all over the back I was going to go up to that and re-cut in the notch. I don't know if I'm going to have torn edges or I'm going to straighten them up. And another piece. I have something that says Delta Bank. Put that over that edge. We're going to do that on both sides. I wanted to show you some quick ways to decorate those where you will not get distracted by the backgrounds and that is actually to make separate little clusters that are plain or plainer than the paper you're putting it on and the way I'm going to do it is to take some pieces of script bearing in mind how tall or central figure is we want a tall piece that will be the main background for this. It's up to you whether you outline that in black or not. I probably prefer it with a slight black outline. Then taking a different style. So here we've got some Japanese, which would be that way. I want to do something squarer a bigger square in something else here I've got a normal book page do it something like that creating a bit of layers I think I'm going to take a bit of this off try edging round it and then it's just where do you want to put it I was going to put it at the bottom but I think I'm going to go more central you could even put that onto a plain background plain piece of coffee paper to make it pop out even more I might actually edge it in black In this instance for me black works better because I actually like that without the focal point I've gone over the page and I'm going to decorate that one and then I might run <clears throat> a bit of washi just was down there that is a complete contrast okay I'm debating whether you should do something on here or not I mean I have some quotes but they're red Oh, maybe that does look quite nice. Nice and simple. Nice simple quote on that one. And a bit of a cluster effect going on on this one. Still think that's a little lost. Try a different image. I have, for example, roses. An advert. I might need to fussy cut that without the white border. All right, let's get this one down. Oh, we do have another red. Okay, so on a more neutral background, we'll go with some high impact images and colour. And on a more colourful background, we'll go with a quote or something really, really simple. That one I did earlier while I was playing. 
so that's two. 